Numbers are so powerful that God called an entire book of the Bible. Numbers. You see a man, a woman, whose life properly connected to purpose. One of the things you will notice about their lives is that Numbers has played a major role in determining their progress. Christ robe of righteousness. We find they are but filthy rags. Can you imagine? They are but filthy rags. So if our righteousness is like filthy rags, how then can we stand before the Lord? The Bible says when Jesus died and resurrected, what did he do? He said, you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So in Colossians, he said, beloved, put on the newness of life. He said, put on. So you clothe yourself. He said, put off filthiness. Put off unrighteousness. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. So you wear Christ as a garment. So you can stand before God and God sees you as pure as he sees Jesus. That's where power comes from. If you write and say, Father, I receive the clothing that is needed. I receive the clothing needed for my destiny, for my journey. I receive joy. I receive peace, favor, strength. Clothe me, O Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. You be clothed with this righteousness. All right. Somebody say amen. Amen. Okay. Now, quickly. Genesis. Let's finish Genesis. Are we still doing three? We've not even done 30. So, go ahead. Now, after the land appeared, help me read one to go. God spoke. Earth. What? So, remember the first time he spoke was separate. Second time now he's speaking green up. Now this is beside the first time he spoke light and kept calling other things. But here on the third day he said separate. Then he separated what needed to be separated. Then he said earth green up. So the earth that manifested was still valueless because the value of a thing is determined by what is on that ground or what is in the ground. So the earth showed up and God said, we're not going to leave you this way. Green up. Now everybody could read loud and clear. Grow what? Of grow what? So on the third day God commissioned the earth to have the ability please listen to this to grow all varieties do you know that there are some people that no matter how hard you try they are one, they are not varieties. They can only do one thing at a time. The moment you involve the second or the third, they go to sleep. They get confused. They get overwhelmed. Do you know that the earth, the life you are supposed to live, 
if your third day is properly harnessed your life is supposed to give you all varieties of seed bearing plant not plant bearing seed oh. seed bearing plant plant grow that has seed in itself so that the life cycle of your achievement is predictable. That you can say, I have the seed of mango. I'm expecting the tree of mango. You know, sometimes when you have some beautiful things that God wants people to learn, it's, it's, for many people, they are unable to learn. Or some people, it's like, God, this is too hard to learn. I don't think it's hard. Is this hard at all? It's very simple, right? Okay. Are you connecting? All right. Now, let's read this. Go ahead. Let's go fast. Everybody read with me. Every sort of fruit-bearing tree. First, seed-bearing plant. Fruit-bearing tree. And what happened? There it was. Earth produce green seed bearing plants. All varieties. And fruit bearing trees of all sorts. God saw. That what? That what? So this third day ought to bring good things to your life. Yeah. But understand that the third day resurrection power the third day is supposed to bring forth seeds seeds bearing trees, plants all of all varieties so that your life is not a boring life. God is the God of varieties. If your life is bored, it's because you have not connected to this dimension of God. So today, I pray that the chaotic mess that God is fixing will bring you to the place where everything that needs to grow to make your life sweet, both plants vegetations, fruits everything because the seed is in it, it continues to produce and produce and produce I decree it becomes your portion, let your life grow good things that benefit you for a lifetime in the name of Jesus it was evening it was morning day three Set me day three. Now, if you have day three, look at day three. Brought forth fruit, right? Fruit. Look at day 30. Genesis 5, verse 3. It's not day 30, now it's year 30. Very quickly, let's do that. Help me, everybody, want to go. When Adam was 129, 150, 131, 130 years old, he had a son who was just like him. His very spirit and image and named him Set. After the birth of Set, Adam lived another 800 years, having more sons and daughters. 
Adam lived a total of 960. 930 years. And he Did you get all the crazy truths here? First, Adam. The Bible calls him the first Adam. The first man. He is the first human flesh that lived. Jesus, the Bible calls him a quickening spirit. He is the last Adam. Jesus began his ministry at the age of 30. So, in three years, he accomplished things. That three and a half years, he was gone. Pay attention. The last Adam. Adam had sons early but Satan leveraged on the license Adam gave him when Adam disobeyed God he gave Satan license to dictate his life and if you let Satan dictate your life it brings you down to chaos and mess chaotic mess, disgrace, pain, and sorrow. So Adam lost his two sons. Cain killed Abel. Say corrupt. corrupt. Error. Error. The ground drank Abel's blood. Say error. error. Corrupt. corrupt. God cursed Cain and sent him away. So Adam lost his son Abel to death and he saw, lost his son Cain to what? Fugitive trip. Cain became, the, became a fugitive. Do you know that death is not the cessation of life? It's separation from source. So it's as if Cain was separated so he was as good as dead. But the scripture says something happened on the 30th year. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. That all of a sudden on the 30th year Adam begat another son just like his very spirit and image and named him Seth. Seth happens to be the third son of Adam. Wow. Wow. I thought this thing is too much. Oh. The third son of Adam. Number three is the number of correction. And on his 130th year, he gave birth. The number 30 is the number of what? Responsibility. The number of responsibility. The number of royalty. The number of reigning. It's also the number of revelation. You are revealing something good. So everything went wrong in his life. But his third child became the corrector. The corrector of everything. And the third child waited for the 30th day. Sorry, the 30th year. Yes. Yes. 
on the third yet year the third child that's what I told you the third month and the third yet day is highly prophetic so what will happen everything the enemy corrupted in your life will be corrected so one is correction number two when God corrects he consolidates consolidation that's when he begins to bring different pieces together so that the nonsense the nonsensicals in your life the nonsense begin to make sense because consolidation is among several things the integration of everything into a piece to be able to generate what or to be able to create strength or reveal strength so God is not just correcting God is consolidating consolidation but not only that consolidation is God's way of bringing compensation it's not everyone but someone here get ready because it's your season of compensation God is saying to tell you it's your season of compensation do you know what it means to compensate now he mentioned it about Adam 130 years go and check the story of his wife Eve when Eve gave birth to Seth the Bible says Eve said God has given me another son instead or in place of Cain whom in place of Abel whom Cain do you think your tears will last forever? Do you think your mourning will last forever? Do you think that nice season will last forever? Do you think your sorrow will last forever? God wants me to say to you from today, you are entering into your appointed time of compensation. <laughs> Believe the Lord your God, you will be established believe his prophet you will prosper say compensation, compensation. say compensation. compensation it's amazing to know that he lived and at the age of 130 he received compensation and at the age of 930 800 years later he had sons whose names we don't know. Daughters whose names we don't know. So for those of you asking who did Cain marry? He married his sister. Because in those days it was allowed. It wasn't considered incest. They were the only humans. So God allowed Cain to marry one of the daughters of Eve. 
Eve gave birth to go back a little bit and he had what? Adam lived around and have more sons and daughters. So Cain married one of his sisters. Seth married one of his sisters. Bad news for the girl that married Cain. <laughs> Sister, please oh, don't marry Cain. He will kill you. But good news. The one that married Seth. Because Seth, just like his name, he will reset your life. Is someone say amen? amen? So, 800 years. So, at 930, he died. When you go down scriptures, you will find out that the number 30 kept playing and playing. All through 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, he kept playing to the point that Joseph was 30 years old. Genesis 41, verse 6. When he stood before Pharaoh. So everything about Joseph's life, all that Satan messed up became a message 4146 so his mess led him to standing before Pharaoh Amen. as you go through scripture you find out that even the measurement of the curtain in the temple was 30 cubits. <laughs> 30 cubits. <laughs> Joseph was 30 years old when he went to work for Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. So every one of you this 30th day, I command supernatural opening. Royal opening. Let your work be work with kings. For kings. In the name of Jesus. David reigned at the age of 30. Saul 30. John 30. Jesus 30. As you go all through scripture, you wonder why Judas sold Jesus for how much? Thirty pieces of silver. It has to make sense in the spirit world for it to work. I have over 104 174 evidences from the Bible of the potency of the number 30. 30 is such a unique that God uses it for his glory. Just one or two more. Quickly everyone. Judges 10 verse 4. Judges 10 verse 4. Can you help me read everybody? Jah the Gileadite stepped into leadership. He judged Israel for what? 22 years. Now look at what happened. He had 
30 sons who rode on 30 donkeys and had 30 towns in Gilead. 30 sons. 30 caught donkeys. 30 cities. They call for Nimba Shataya. Today is the 30th day. I stand on the authority of God's word. The Bible says at the age of 30, John was revealed. At the age of 30, Jesus began his ministry. The atmosphere here today, among several things, is an atmosphere of correction. Whatever went wrong with your family's foundation, let the blood of Jesus correct such. Amen. The atmosphere is the atmosphere of consolidation. When the waters were scattered everywhere, the Bible called it a chaotic mess or mass. Suddenly, God said separate there are certain things that are important but so long as they are not consolidated into their own body they become your own burden are you with me water in a cup satisfies you water spill on the ground becomes hazardous to you. So, God said separate. So, God consolidated the waters and he called it ocean. I believe for every one of you, every good thing in your life that has, for whatever reason, made your life look like a mess, by the mercies and power of God. This atmosphere, this prophetic day of consolidation, I command this to be consolidated, be consolidated, be consolidated in the name of Jesus. Number three, this atmosphere is the atmosphere of compensation. When God consolidated the body of waters, he called it ocean. When he consolidated the land, he called it earth. But then he went further to compensate the land. And he said, land, you are compensated. Of course, the ocean will soon have its own compensation because God compensated the ocean with fish and all manner of sea creatures. But the earth, he compensated the earth with seed-bearing trees, seed-bearing plants, seed-bearing plants, fruit bearing trees he compensated the earth so that this earth today will lose its strength if you take trees out of it the earth is so beautifully decorated that the trees we see everywhere play a major role in the longevity of mankind because 
you breathe in oxygen. Where do you get oxygen from? Not just the air. Clean air comes from trees, plants. You breathe out carbon dioxide. What you release, I told you nothing is useless. The trees breathe out oxygen. And you take their oxygen for your own life. You breathe out carbon dioxide. The trees and the plants take what you release for their own life. So everything makes sense if you look for sense in it. So, so everything, the air you are breathing out, you may think that is this house that is receiving it. No. Somehow what you breathe out escapes from this room and look for a tree, a flower, a grass, a plant somewhere and feed that tree. Nothing is useless. Nothing is useless. I say nothing is useless. So the dream.